Chapman Show. A big howdy to you and yours. Welcome to the Spud Goodman Show. You know, my job description calls for me to announce who's on the show tonight. Not exactly an assignment for the best and the brightest, huh? I mean, any moron could inform you that tonight, Spud visits with comedian Paul Rodriguez, goes one-on-one -on -one with NBA superstar Sean Kemp, and brings you the hot sounds of Sky Cries Mary. You know, I got my MBA at Michigan State in 87. What a waste. Anyway, let's check in with one of my favorite comedians, Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> All right, Paul, now, you've done so many HBO comedy specials. I was just curious, has Time Warner cut you in on a stock option at this point? Nah, nah, Time Warner hasn't, uh... I mean, you did crap yet, huh? Just residuals. Okay. Just, you get your residuals, and that's it. They're, they're not very generous. Now, Paul, from following your career over the years, you definitely have mined the political world for humor. I was just wondering, have you noticed a drop-off in terms of inspiration going from Reagan and Bush to now Clinton? Yeah, uh, Reagan Bush uh, was a lot better for comedy. Clinton hasn't thrown up on anybody or fallen asleep or his wife. Uh, we haven't found out that she's like uh, consulting a psychic. Uh, well, you know, other than your usual, you know, sexual harassment suits. He has a horny lecture, isn't he? Well, you know, I'm proud to say that that's one of the reasons why I personally voted for him. Mm -hmm. He's probably the only president in my lifetime that I know could actually get an erection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Sometimes in life, life at, at night in bed when the mind wanders, wanders you, wonder you wonder what it would be like to be a Shetland, Shetland pony, pony just, just for a day. day. I guess the point I was trying to say is it didn't seem like the door was wide open a few years ago. Well, there's another little resentment here, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a there's the resentment among comedians is that, you know, Mexican comedians are, are here taking jobs away from honest white comics. And I sympathize with you, you know. We're just, uh, you know, we're just, we, Same we have to work. Same thing in the aerospace industry, I noticed, too. So there you go. All right, there super. You okay, now, uh... <laughs> Now, you've been very active uh, with Comic Relief. I was just curious, yeah. what's the status of the project at this point? Well, it, it, it'll continue to go. It, it's a problem that, uh, see, let me explain about the homeless. When I talk about the homeless, I'm not talking about a guy who hasn't any limbs missing, who's, uh, who's able-bodied like mm -hmm. you and I, and just has a sign and wants mm -hmm. you to give him a free buck. That's not who I'm out there trying to help. It's basically uh, uh, women and children, you know, they, they have a child and they have to make the decision of whether to work or mm -hmm. to support the child. They find themselves on welfare, that ain't enough to get a house, and I'm no bleeding heart liberal, but, but those are the people that we try to help, you know, not, not, uh, not somebody who just basically uh, believes that the world owes them something, you know, I don't owe them anything, you know. Okay, Paul, uh, I'm going to hit you with a really deep question here. Your most memorable moment at this point as a human. Uh, seeing Jerry Lewis and Pee Wee Herman backstage at Comic Relief 3. That must have been a meeting of the minds there. <laughs> it was, they were doing each other. Ooh, there you go. And uh, right. I don't mean that biblically. All right, there you go, super. I really, I really like, like Paul. Paul. I wonder if he'll remember me next week when I call and ask him to put in a good word for me at HBO. Uh, it's, it's baloney. A man doesn't begin look to... Look hair. Let's compare hair. Well, look, man, look. Take it off. Take it all the way up. Well, you're, you got a little thinner right there. But, well, well, thank you. But let me tell you, it's the Forrest Gump look. It's in right now, man. Well, is that true? See, chicks are nuts over this hair. Cause there's women right now getting moist just looking at us. I ain't kidding you. It really works. Well, it does. a lot, man. Dude. All right. I'll have you know that I am a real meteorologist, a dues-paying member of the American Meteorological Association. Now, that's all well and good, but I have no need for a weatherman on this program. Why don't you send an audition tape to some station in Utah? They're always looking for weathermen down there. They have all kinds of openings. They have a really high turnover. I guess they lose a lot of them in bicycle mishaps. Look, I have big dreams. I want to break new ground in TV, be a trendsetter. I don't want to be just another weather person on the nightly news Cast. I want to be the first meteorologist to do the weather cast on a regular TV show. I want to be the Jackie Robinson of my profession. As producer of this show, I see no need for your services. Is that direct enough? Now, if you'll excuse me. I will not be deterred by your attitude. Surely you must have a boss, a modern day branch Ricky. Someone I could take this to? Yeah, you can call him. 
You'll find him in the phone book under TV network presidents. Give him my best, too. This is a Spy Goodman Show. You must be crazy. Just crazy. No, no, no. We've got to pick up the pace. Remember, we're appealing to the kids. Kids like their music hard and fast. I'm playing as fast as I can, Mrs. Goodman. Don't you understand? Inagata de Vida is a tough song. Jerry here feels we should do another song. He hates that Inagata de Vida. Besides, his hand is cramping from doing that 20 minute long drum solo in the tambourine. Well, if you had brought a real drum set, we wouldn't have this problem, would we? Look, if we want to be the musical guest on Spud Show, we're gonna have to work a lot harder than this. I know, but what if Spud won't let us play on the show? Well, just let me say, Jerry here has more musical talent in his big toe than all those big rock bands Spud has on the show. They're horrible. Oh, my baby will see the light when he hears our demo tape. I can see it now. We'll play his funky little TV show. And then Lauren Michaels from Saturday Night Live calls. Is that still on? I thought that went off in 88. Jerry here says he would never play on Saturday Night Live. What? OK, you tell him then. I could never appear in the show that fired Anthony Michael Hall. It was an affront to mankind. OK, so maybe we'll do Conan O'Brien. Oh, Mrs. Goodman, jeez. I don't think so. I don't even need to run that one by, Jerry. Well, it isn't like there's hundreds of shows looking for musical talent. Well, I hear the gong show is making a comeback, and they're looking for talent. Whoa, the gong show would be awesome. Jerry was devoted to Gene Gene the Dancing Machine and the Unknown Comic. Well, if we're going to aim that high, we've got a lot of work to do. One, two, three, four! Ah! In the vida, vida, baby! Don't you know that I love ya, honey? In the vida, vida, baby! Inagata de Vida as the third worst song of this century. Right behind you, light up my life, and anything by John Bon Freakin' Jovi. Our musical guests for this evening have been making the rounds doing the required network shows, so it's about time they squeeze us into their busy schedule. Here's Sky Cries Mary. <laughs>
Listen, Irish, you're close to the kid. I mean, as a bodyguard, you take a bullet for him, right? I mean, he listens to you. All I'm asking is for a chance for America to meet Heather here. You know, a little exposure on the show. She says she's a supermodel. And God, you know how America loves supermodels. You know, I met her at Safeway. I went in for a head of lettuce, walked out with a lamb chop. Say hello, Heather. Hello. I tell you, Spud needs to book a few supermodels. Why do you think Letterman has them on? R-A-T-I-N-G-S ratings, that's why. Heather, honey, can I get you a mineral water? <laughs> Do you have any light beer? Uh, well, I'll check. Anyway, Irish, I promised Heather I'd get her on the show. So, could you mention her to Spud, you know, put in a good word for her? I don't get involved in booking, Mr. Goodman. I know, but at least the kid talks to you. You know, he's still a little upset with me. I don't know why he doesn't cut his old man a little slack. Geez, all I did was ask out Jennifer Jason Lee when she was on the show. We had a really good time. Sorry, I can't help you. Sparky, I thought you said there were going to be Hollywood talent agents here. This place is a dump. Yeah, well, listen, the talent agents are coming by later. I say, are you hungry? Why don't we go out and grab a bite and we'll come back later? Well, is there a sizzler around here? Oh, yeah, right up the street. Spud's father is a disgusting lecher. But he sure does get his share of the bucks and beauties. How the hell does he do it? Somebody, please fill me in on that one. Right now, let's check in with Spud as he applies the full court press on NBA superstar Sean Kemp of the Seattle Sonics. All right, Sean, I gotta ask you this. Now, your nickname's The Rain Man. I was just curious, do you have any kind of input into nicknames, like if you want to change it down the road, if you get tired of it? What do you think? I, well, I've, I've thought about it many times of changing the nickname. Uh, you know, sometimes, matter of fact, sometimes uh, me and the fellas, we sit around the house and uh, think of nicknames. <laughs> Throw out a couple that they've maybe suggested. Uh, we can think of Special K. There uh, you go. Dr. Feelgood. There you uh, go. Uh, the Specialist. Yes. Uh, we have several of them. <laughs> man, I could use a nickname. Maybe you could come up with, how'd you like to go around life named Spud? Spud. I mean, talk about a man that's in need of a nickname. It's me. He probably, he probably thinks, thinks I'm some, some little, little geek, geek who can't, can't stick, stick a jumper or go, go to the left, left hand on the drive. drive. Well, okay, okay the, the jumper, jumper does need a little work. work. And does it seem like they're riding you this year for that? Oh, man, I mean, they, now I can't even look at guys. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean. If I look at a guy, I tell you, they give me a technical 500, you know, 500 bucks for a technical. That's getting expensive. It's a lot of CDs, man. Yeah. Okay, uh, now as a high school player in the state of Indiana, did you ever lay awake in, in bed at night with, like, nightmares of, of maybe playing for Bobby Knight someday, the Mussolini of the hardwoods? Actually, uh, the whole state thought I was going to go play for Bobby Knight. And, uh, Bobby and a wise Knight. move there. And Bobby Knight came to the house, and um, unfortunately, uh, I chose a different way. Can That's I right. get in this conversation here? No, you can't. No, you know your role. Know your role. Anyway, okay. Now, uh, what was it like? What's it like at this point to have like your own line of shoes? Because I got to tell you this: a guy on the rec team that I play with, you know, um, he swears he wears your shoes. By the way, he swears it's added like 19 inches to his vertical jump. Even last night, I, I, I come out the game in the fourth court. I'm sitting on the bench, and the fan yells. He says, "Sean, is it the shoes?" Yes, it is. Well, and this guy would—you should talk to this guy. He would attest to it. Now, on the related note, it's it's common it's common knowledge around town that occasionally, on very special occasions. You uh, you run you you play a little ball out of Green Lake during the summer oh, yeah. some other locations. Now, this is a for instance. What happens if you're running with some guy from Boeing or a dentist and he throws up a few bricks and you're running with him? I mean, are you kind or are you brutal with him? Oh, I have to let him know. You know, let's play exactly. serious out here. And uh, that's the thing. After the season's over, I, I love to enjoy going out playing with guys uh, around Seattle area. I go play in various places: uh, the North End, the South End. So, at mm -hmm. any time, you can see me at any park, basically playing. All right. All right, super. If I was 6'10 in junior, junior high, no, no way, way would I have got, got cut from the basketball, basketball team. team. I blame I my parents for the rotten genes that have relegated me to a life of mediocrity. You're known as the fifth Beatle, so to speak, of Pearl Jam. Do you ever sit in with the fellas and play the tambourine or anything? I haven't lately, no. Never, ever? No. Okay, all right, that's for the record. Now, last question. This is a tough one, and I want you to dig deep on this. Your long-term career goals at this point. 
What do you think they are, long-term career goals? Long-term career goals, uh, you know, I think, uh, first of all, basketball is the first important thing to me right now, but uh, you know, education is always important mm -hmm. to me. So uh, when my career is over in basketball, I'll go back to attending school. And let me just say this to you about the education thing. I happen to have like a couple old theses that I never did. Well, actually, I bought them. But, you know, if you ever need anything when you get to like the, uh, you know, like finals time and you have to turn in papers, yeah. I got a bunch of them stacked up. All right, I might all need right. your help sometime. All right, there you have Mr. Yeah. Sean Kemp. Sports have never been something I've excelled at. I mean, back in grade school at recess, not only was I the last one chosen for teams, sometimes they even used me for the ball. Basketball wasn't too bad. Those softball bats hurt like hell! This is the Spud Goodman Show. <laughs> Hello, I'm Spud Goodman, and I understand you're a Nielsen family? You're hooked up to the box that delivers the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Is this correct? No, we're the Fens, and this is my husband Henry, and I'm Opal. Mother, do you want me to take care of him now? You said the next time a stranger come around. Maybe it's a bad time. No, Henry, I was only Josh, and you know you could get arrested for shooting an unarmed man. Say, what did you say your name was? Spud Goodman, I host this little TV show, but I was wondering if you'd be willing to write a letter of recommendation to the Nielsen Company. Tell them at least one Nielsen family respects the Spud Goodman show. How about I just tie him up or something? That wouldn't be polite, dear. You mean the little box that they hooked up to the TV set? Well, Henry let him in while I was at the laundromat. Just what does that box do? It gives life, and that's why I'm here, okay? I need your help. Would you please write the letter? I can't pay her anything to do it because technically that would be payola, but I'm sure we can work out something here. Well, just what do you want us to say in this letter, Spanky? I don't like the way this guy looks. Check out his eyes. You can't see his eyes anyway. Wasn't he on America's Most Wanted last night? It wasn't me, okay? Now, Mrs. Fenton, all you'd have to write is something like, The Spud Goodman Show is a beacon of integrity in the vast wasteland of television. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Mother, this guy gives me the creeps. What if he plans on kidnapping us? I know about these things. Honey, this is Woods good enough. Don't you recognize him? We saw his program a few times for a second or two. He's the one that annoys all those celebrities. Boy, I saw you and Robin Leach and I thought he was gonna take a poke at you. Mother, I'll keep my eye on this joker. You call the FBI. Come on, you guys, I really need your help. I wanna make my show into a massive monster hit. It's tough competing against the big guys. I wouldn't get your hopes up, spoof. Hey, I'm going to leave some paper with you and a brand new number two pencil, okay? Any kind words would be greatly appreciated. I'm out of here. I'll say we jump him now, and he won't know what hit him. Well, I'm about out of here. I'm supposed to say thanks for watching and all that stuff, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. A friend loaned me the laser disc of Faces of Death, the director's cut, and I'm just dying to see it. So, see you again next week. Here's Sky Cries Mary! <laughs>